All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good to see you all. And um, welcome back for another um, talk about Woods Humane Society. And today, like Sally said, we're going to talk about dogs and about dog training. I'm going to try to share my screen um, here today and uh, get us started with some pictures. And we'll go see the dogs that are here in our shelter. Um, so let's see here if I can make that start from the beginning for y'all. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay, so uh, talking about dogs today, there are dogs are known as uh, man's best friend, human's best friend. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about why that is and how that happens. So um, dogs become our best friends for a number of reasons. Um, and maybe you guys can think to yourselves why you think dogs become um, such good friends to us people. And I'll tell you a few of my ideas. Um, dogs are loyal, loving, playful, and cuddly. So they make great friends. They're just so sweet to be around. They're also actually good for us, though. So they, um, scientists have found that they do things like lower our stress levels. They lower our blood pressure, our anxiety depression and loneliness. So um, those are uh, really great health benefits that dogs bring into our lives. They also can decrease the risk of asthma and allergies. Um, they help us to get out the door and exercise often when we go and take them on a walk and they give us a sense of purpose each day. So these are a few reasons that I think dogs are really great for us, great to be in our lives. Um, and I was wondering, how do you guys think that this connection happened between humans and dogs, where these two different species of humans and dogs came together and they lived together and became such best friends? And part of that process was um, through domestication. So many 30,000 plus years ago, um, there were wolves and um, there weren't dogs. So they uh, gradually evolved um, to let these wild animals that we know as wolves um, evolved and changed to become the dogs, the companions that live in our, in our homes and in our lives. And some of the reasons that that happened was because we, sh we had some mutual benefits, which means that they got some good things and we got some good things by hanging out together. So um, the, the wolves or the wild dogs, they got, by hanging out with people, they got to, um, you know, get some extra food, some scraps, maybe that the people gave them, they got some shelter and warmth. Um, it helps them to survive and it also gave them some companionship. So those are all good things. And humans benefited from those wild dogs because they would tend to be good guardians and to protect their, their home and their land. They also are really good at things like herding and hunting. Um, so uh, people began to use those skills that dogs naturally have and to, um, to breed them for certain, certain tasks that would help. So um, because of that, we now have certain breeding groups of dogs that are known for doing certain tasks if they're trained. Um, so there's the herding group, there's the working group, the hounds, the sporting group the non-sporting, the terrier, and the toy group. And these are all, um, you know, types of breeds of dogs that are known for doing these kinds of work um, when they're trained to do so from their humans. So they kind of have certain skills that allow, allow them to do that. So maybe for the hounds, they have really big noses, right? And they're able to smell really, really well. And so we've used that skill that they have to train them to help us sniff things out and to, to find things for us. So, um, Working dogs today have evolved even more um, to help us with even more things aside from um, hunting and herding and things like that. They actually help us um, with search and rescue. Um, they help us uh, as service dogs where they'll, they'll be guide dogs or hearing aid dogs. Um, they're also our therapy dogs, which help um, people that um, maybe have stress or anxiety or PTSD. And then there's also emotional support dogs that are basically untrained dogs that just provide emotional support just by being there with their people. So dogs provide a lot of help to people when they're trained to do so. Um, these are, this is the Guide Dogs of America and Stephanie there in the picture on the right is actually our local 
representative of this group and they train dogs to help people who are blind or visually impaired um, as well as veterans. Um, actually, no, they, so they just work with blind and visually impaired. There's other groups such as New Life Canines that works with veterans and with um, people with PTSD who um, need the support of a dog. And so these are both two local organizations that actually train dogs from puppy on up to, to become these um, basically working dogs that really have a job their whole life to help the humans they live with. And then there are also dogs who um, are trained sort of on a professional level to just to compete or to, um, to do a lot of tricks. So Chaser is a Border Collie who has actually been trained to know 1,022 human words, which is wild. Um, so this dog has, the dog and his owner have obviously worked together to learn um, so much. So um, there's a lot that, that dogs have learned to pick up on from us over the period of time where they've been living with us humans. Um, but can we look, you know, they, they know words like sit and down and, and up and in and out and things like that. But can we speak dog as well as they can speak um, our human language? Um, it's just as important since we have dogs in our life to make sure that, you know, not only are they listening to us and, and understanding what we want from them, but that we're listening to them and understanding their feelings. Um, so I always love to talk about dog body language and explain how dogs have feelings just like us people. So as you can see in these pictures, um, they are expressing emotions that we understand, but they just show it in a little bit of a different way. Um, so, the, so our human emotions of maybe anger or fear or excitement um, are same as dog emotions. However, they just show them in a, in a dog way. So um, to learn a little bit more about dog body language, I have some pictures for you guys so that we can understand um, our dog's feelings and kind of think about those feelings, not only just expecting our dogs to understand us, but also expecting ourselves to understand our dogs and how they feel and how we can help them to make to feel better. So this dog here um, is showing that he feels Scared, actually, this is a really common um, way that a dog will show fear is that it's it will tuck its tail underneath its legs and its ears will go back and down and its eyes will get large. Um, this dog is also curving his back he's kind of cowering, making himself small um, and his eyes are really white uh, or large and you can see the white part of the eyes. So these are all um, little cues that the dog is giving us that he's feeling really terrified. So he doesn't actually want us to come up and pet him right now. He's feeling scared. He wants us to maybe back away and let him have some, some time alone. And so if we pay attention to these cues, we can be a better friend to our dogs and think about their, their feelings and emotions. So, um, here are four of the biggest categories of emotions that I see with dogs. I've got the happy, the scared, the angry, and the, the sort of stressed or uneasy body language. So um, on our top right category, our top left, sorry, corner of the page, we've got the happy dog. He's actually doing a play bow and this dog is bowing down. He's doing like a downward dog, like you might see in yoga. And he's showing that he is excited to play. That's actually a playful behavior of a dog to show another dog or a human that he's happy and wants to be friendly and play. Um, and, and another way that they might show happiness is by having a loose, relaxed body. And I'll show some pictures of this in a moment. Um, the scared dog, like we just talked about, I call them the roly poly dogs because they kind of roll themselves and tuck themselves up small ears go back, tail goes under, eyes get large. Um, that's a scared dog. He's wanting to have some space. The angry dog is actually gonna do the opposite of the roly poly dog. I call him the Hulk mode dog. So he likes to try to get himself to look bigger and he'll even stand up taller, stick his fur up in the air like a doggy mohawk and um, ears will go up and forward, eyes will be large and staring, and the mouth will be either clenched or showing teeth. And this is the dog's way of trying to say how he feels, that he's angry and he doesn't want you to come closer. Um, so he's probably protecting his food or his family or um, a, a bone or his, uh, maybe he's injured, maybe he's protecting his house. 
a number of things, but he's trying to show you with his body not to come closer. Finally, the stressed and uneasy dog will do things that maybe we would not recognize as stress in a dog, but now that you guys know them, you can keep an eye out for them. Um, things like licking their nose, yawning, ignoring you, so looking the opposite way when you call them, um, itching or shaking. These are all behaviors that a dog might do if it is just a little bit stressed and uneasy and not, not quite sure about what's going on and um, needs a little bit of time to, to warm up. So um, this is how these look in a real, on real life dogs. So this is that dog doing a happy play bow, inviting some play time. This is more of a relaxed dog. This is probably how your dog at home looks if you have one um, around you. They'll, they'll show you with their whole body that they're calm and they're not worried about you. So their ears will be floppy, tongue flopping out of their mouth, eyes relaxed, maybe even closing or taking a nap around you so they're really not concerned which is great a scared dog though has that curled back um ears backward this white strip um, that you can see in this dog's eye we call that a whale eye and that happens when a dog is feeling very frightened um, usually we don't actually see the white part of their eye very well um, when they're feeling just happy and, and normal and natural um, but if they're feeling scared their eyes will get wider and that's when we'll see that white part of the whale uh, whale eye look on that dog's face. Um, an angry dog, like I said, might get bigger. You can see the fur puffing up on his back. You can see that his mouth is um, clenched and he's maybe even growling. Um, and if he were to get a little bit angrier, if that person comes a little closer to him, maybe he bares his teeth and actually shows you those sharp doggy teeth because he's trying to warn you and say, hey, look, I have these teeth in my mouth and I don't want to have to use them. So I just want to show them to you so that you stay away. So that's what that dog is doing. Um, this is a, stress, a couple of the stressed dogs. So we've got a yawning dog up here um, and a dog in the middle here that's licking his nose and then yawning. Those are both signs that the dog is actually stressed and he's trying to make himself feel better by yawning and by licking his nose. He's kind of trying to self-soothe. Um, so we can keep an eye out for these signs from dogs to know how they're feeling. And um, there are lots of different ways um, that, that dogs express themselves. Um, another one I didn't mention, sometimes dogs will roll over on their back and show you their tummy. And this is a sign um, that they don't want, it's a sign of submission. So that means that they don't, they don't want to cause any problems with you. Um, they want to, to um, acknowledge you as the, the boss in the room. Um, and they also might want a belly rub. <laughs> so that's also a, a friendly gesture. Um, so um, before we go back and see the dogs in their dog kennels um, today, I'll go. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how a dog looks. Um, so this time not talking about its body language, but about actually how it looks um, and what breed we might think it is. Uh, because here at the animal shelter, we have a lot of dogs who um, we don't know who their parents were. And we all we know is what we see. Um, and you might see a dog back there and think, oh, that's a German Shepherd because it looks like a German Shepherd. Well, it turns out that um, you actually can't judge a dog by how it looks. You can't judge a book by its cover, right? So um, it turns out that, you know, if, if um, we can't accurately predict, as it says in this quote here, the, um, the behavior of a dog based on how it looks or how its breed looks or what its DNA is. So um, despite how a dog may look on the outside or what their breed or breed mix may be, research reveals that dogs are complex animals influenced by many factors. Looks alone do not dictate behavior. Um, so the reason I say this is that um, sometimes we see an animal that looks like this one here and we expect certain things from it. So um, I might see this picture and think that's a German Shepherd. And what kind of associations do we make with German Shepherds? Are they playful or are they serious? Are they protective or are they snuggly? Well, some people might um, expect that a German Shepherd would be more serious, more protective, 
Um, and then if they get one that's, that's not that way, they might be confused or disappointed. Um, so what, what helps is to, to remember that we can't judge dogs based on, on the breed that they look like. They're their own individuals. So each and every dog is its own individual. And all the dogs here at the shelter that you'll see, um, we don't actually know their breed for sure. So it doesn't even really um, help us to know what, what breed they look like because they're their own individuals. Um, to kind of show this point, I have um, on the screen here, uh, there's 12 dogs that are, um, that all look, uh, they're all mixes. And among these, uh, among these pictures, these 12, there's only four, only four of these pictures are actually German Shepherd mixes, okay? So even if all of them to you look like German Shepherd mixes, based on their DNA, only four of them actually are. So I'll give you a second to look and see if you wanna guess um, which four are the German Shepherds. So we've got the, the all white dog up here. He's kind of being blocked on my screen, sorry. But um, uh, then we've got the, I guess I could make it smaller here. Ah, that doesn't really help. Um, there we go. So he, we've got the all white dog, the tan and black, the black dog. So I'll give you guys one more second to think to yourself, um, which of the, which four are the German Shepherd mixes? So this, um, in this little experiment, the shelter, the shelter did a DNA test on these dogs to determine what they actually, what kind of breed they actually are based on their, their doggy DNA. And here are the results. The four German Shepherds are the four that you might not have guessed. So the first one that's all white and kind of shaggy looking like a big terrier, he's actually up to 49% German Shepherd. So he's almost half German Shepherd. This guy here, you kind of can see that. I would have guessed Boxer maybe, but um, he's actually half German Shepherd as well. Um, and then this guy here or girl uh, who looks to me more like a lab or a golden retriever is actually part German Shepherd. And finally, <laughs> this dog here, who definitely has a bit of a pug nose and ears, um, he has also has 50% of his DNA is from a German Shepherd breed. So it's not necessarily the, the breed that you would expect um, the, 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 of those 12 pictures. It's the ones that you might expect to be a German Shepherd, like I might guess two or 11. Um, or yeah, maybe three. <laughs> None of those were actually German Shepherds. So we really can't tell by looking. So um, uh, what we might want to do is to just open up our mind when we're look looking at dogs. And even if they look like a breed we recognize, we it's really important to remember that they're all really individuals. They all have their own personality. Even if we know what breeds, what breeds they're made of, we don't really know how that's going to show out in their personality. So I love thinking of these animals as individuals. Um, we also want to remember that not all dogs want to work. So even if you did have a German Shepherd, that doesn't mean he necessarily wants to be a working dog that works with the police officers. He may want to be more of a couch potato German Shepherd and live at home with you. Um, not all dogs want to be emotional support dogs or service dogs either. These are actually you know, tough jobs for dogs and not all of them want to do that. So um, that said, it is really, really fun to train your dogs. And we do have training classes here at Woods Humane Society. Um, this in our the picture there is one of our trainers, Michelle, and she holds classes for the public. They are really fun. She uses re um, rewards only for the dogs. So it's called positive reinforcement training. Um, and, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like a game for the dog. So my dog, Ollie, and I have done a lot of these um, together and we have a whole lot of fun with it. So I, I do recommend it, but just being really patient and just have fun with it. For most of our dogs, they're not really working dogs. They wanna just have fun, just like you and I. So I'm gonna now switch over to, um, to my phone here so that we can go see what animals we do have what dogs we have in our shelter today. 
And um, we'll keep in mind that we don't necessarily know what they are or what that means about them. So I'll stop sharing my screen here and I'm gonna just leave and be right back. So I'll be just one moment. All right, so she'll be back in a moment. Again, if you have any questions or comments, you can put them in chat. Um, and we will have a Q&A session after Jamie is done with the presentation. Um, also, her Wi-Fi might cut out a little bit when she goes into the dog shelter, because I know that's happened before. Okay. So I'm back and I'm heading back to our dog area so we can see who we've got today. I'll turn my screen around here for you guys to see where I'm headed. I'm at Woods Humane Society, San Luis Obispo, and just walked past the cat area where the cats live. And I'm heading back out these two doors here to the dog area of our shelter. The shelter. The dogs go out to doggy Reese a day so they can run around, play with their friends, get some fresh air and some time out of their bedrooms, which are called dog kennels. And I'll show you guys into a few of those. Of course, we better stop first and grab a, a couple of treats to share with them. So the easiest way to make friends with a dog is to share some treats with them. So I will uh, head us first over to... This is what we call pod one. You can see it's a big room, lots of different doggy bedrooms, and lots of different colored cards on each of the rooms. So let's see if we can make some friends with these guys here. We've got, um, we've got a full house right now. So um, let's see, I'll start over. Oh, we better start with the puppies because that's, that's never a guarantee around here that we might see some puppies. Well, hello. <laughs> so um, all the dogs that stay with us and puppies as well, they get their cute little doggy beds and they get their fresh food and water each morning and they get some toys to play with. They have an indoor area that they're in right now. And then at that rectangle you see in the back is where they can go out to their play yard. So um, let's see if we can make some friends with this dog with a little little treat hello <laughs> so this is the very beginning of dog training actually because all i'm doing right now is training this dog that strangers are kind of fun strangers bring us treats which is um something that's important for a dog to learn early on so that they're not afraid of people so let's see if we can make some more friends we got lots of barking dogs going on we have a blue kennel card here for this dog who's named handspring hi handspring yeah get your treat um <laughs> so again he's a shepherd mix right so we don't really know what he is he kind of looks like a shepherd he's got one blue eye i can see a very handsome boy and he's got a blue kennel card because he's a boy, um, whereas his neighbor over here, Cartwheel, has a pink kennel card because she's a girl. And you can see they each have their own personalities. Cartwheel, Cartwheel's a little shy. And Handspring, Handspring's not shy at all. <laughs> and uh, even though they're siblings and they're young puppies, they both have their own individual personalities already. Here we've got Somersault. Somersault is also a shepherd mix, also a puppy. I think all these three came in together as puppies. So they all have a very different look, even though they're in the same litter. <laughs> um, down here we have Chex. This is a little terrier mix Chex. You wanna say hi, Chex? He's looking for that treat. Oh, you found it. Good dog, good dog. What a cutie. So it is fun to guess what breeds they might be. But again, we don't know. He's a terrier chihuahua mix is what we have him down as. <laughs> He's a very unique individual pup. Um, this is Limburger here. Limburger's getting treated by the vets for a, an injury. Looks like he's doing better because he has his cone off today, which is great. He doesn't have to wear his cone. <laughs> he wants some more treats, I think. 
Now this is little <laughs> Faye. I haven't met her yet. She looks maybe like a little bit shy, a little bit nervous. We've got Emerald here. Hi, Emerald. Here's a little treat for you. Let's see who else wants to bark at us today. This is little Inez. Sorry if it's so noisy. A busy day today. Hi, Inez. She's not so sure about my camera. This is Prince. There you go, Prince. Good doggy. So one thing that I do try to be careful with, with the dogs, is I try not to stare at them for too long. Dogs actually get frightened when we stare at them. They don't like that. So, um, so I do say hi, I give a treat, <laughs> and then I, I move along so that they don't feel too nervous about me looking at them. This is Poke. Hi, Poke. Yeah, he's a good boy. Okay, let's see who else we have. Little kicks. Hi, little kicks. Oh, oh, <laughs> so adorable. Looks like a, we have her, her as a Brussels Griffon mix. She's definitely got her own look, though. We have Bella here. Hi, Bella. Here's a little treat for you. <laughs> so Oh, and somebody's going home. I'm probably scaring him a little bit. Oh, look who's getting adopted. Yay! <laughs> That's exciting. You guys got to see it, the magic happening in person. <laughs> Bye, little one. <laughs> All right. And then we have a whole nother room of, of noisy ones. We'll do a quick walkthrough. I'm sure your ears are getting tired. <laughs> This is Tricks. Hi, Tricks. Hi, Razzle. <laughs> now, all these dogs have a green kennel card. That's because they're all brand new to us. They have not seen the doctor yet. And so they will need to see the vet before they are available for adoption. So we're just making friends with them for now. This is Nina. She is available for adoption. She's been here with us the longest for some reason. And look at, she's got a twin right next to her who I don't even know yet. Who are you? Who are you? This is Puka. Hey, Puka. And another husky, Alani. <laughs> we got a great day in the mix. Him to boy. <laughs> um, and we've got Marble, who's a little camera shy. I'll give her some space. We've got a couple cute little ones here. A little Lhasa Apso mix. Oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> and this one here is a Chihuahua named Marky. And we've got, we've still got little Haven, who's just a puppy full of energy. She's so ready to find her home. There's your treat, Haven. Find it. Good girl. <laughs> and let's see we got a terrier puppy here you look so little hey you want a treat she looks like she's probably a young one summer who's our husky who likes to be outside huh summer there you go <laughs> oh man crispy look at this one you guys oh hi hi aren't you so cute you like a little Rice Krispie treat. Yeah. <laughs> what a cutie. So again, uh, mixed here, right? Because she's got like these long floppy ears, terrier fur. <laughs> she's her own. She's her own little creature. So cute. Uh, Butterscotch, our cattle dog, who's also been with us probably the longest. Um, and last but not least, oh, Shadow Ann's out in her recess yard. So that is the full, the full tour. It got a little quieter in here, I noticed. So um, that is uh, all the dogs. We do have a, we have play yards all around for them to go out to throughout the day. And then we also have a walking path that they go take walks with us on. Um, and we have a training room called Woods University, which is where we work on some basic training with them. So um, 
that is the deal. They, they end up getting adopted within about 10 days. So they don't st stay with us too long usually. Sometimes like with the two I mentioned that have been here a little bit longer, it does take a little while to find that perfect match. For the most part, they all find their homes fairly quickly. Uh, does any, do you guys wanna switch over um, now to, to answering some questions?